My girlfriend, 24 female, says it's disrespectful and demeaning that I, 26 male, bought a $900 suit while she's struggling to pay rent. My girlfriend and I have been together for about eight months now. Overall, our relationship has been great and we enjoy being together. We both are independent and have our own careers and jobs. I work as an engineer and make significantly more than my girlfriend does who works as an accountant. I live in a condo by myself. My girlfriend lives with a friend of hers in an apartment and they split rent and bills. I always take initiative to pay for activities like dinners. We do as a couple because I'm doing better financially and I'm the man in the relationship. I don't mind taking the financial burden in our relationship. My salary allows me to enjoy luxuries in my life while still being able to save a good amount of money every month. My girlfriend, on the other hand, spends most of her paycheck on rent because we live in a pretty expensive city and her job doesn't really match the cost of living well. But she always manages to get around and figure it out by herself. I respect her independence and won't interfere with it if she doesn't explicitly ask me. If she was ever in a dire situation where she wouldn't be able to make rent, I would gladly help her if she asked me. My brother's wedding is coming up and I needed a new suit. The past two years have been the first years I could say that I actually had a good amount of money for myself. Before this, I never really bought expensive stuff before because I couldn't afford it. Now that I can afford it, I want to be able to enjoy it. So since it was my brother's wedding, I wanted to go all out on myself for once. So I bought a $900 designer suit that I love. When I showed my girlfriend the suit and told her the price after she asked for it, she got mad at me. She says that me buying an expensive suit like this is disrespectful and demeaning towards her because I know she can't afford luxuries like this and that she can barely make rent while I'm buying a suit that costs about as much. I first thought that she meant that she wouldn't be able to make rent, so I offered to help her out, but apparently she will be able to make it, and she says that it's just a disrespectful gesture of me and that I'm not considering how she feels. She said that I shouldn't have bought it out of respect for her. I'm a very caring person in general, but something I'll never accept is someone telling me what I can and cannot buy with my own money. So I told her that what I buy with my own money isn't her decision. I already pay for most things in our relationship, so I don't see why I can't spend the rest of my money on things that I want. This led to her starting a huge argument going back and forth. I tried to communicate with her, but she just kept going on and on about how disrespectful this was of me, so I just ended up leaving. We haven't spoken for a day now and don't really know how to continue from here on out. This is why you need to be careful with dating apps. On November 15th, 2017, 24-year-old Sydney Louvre decided to meet Bailey Boswell in person after speaking on Tinder for a few days. For their first date, Bailey invited Sydney to come over to her apartment that she shared with her boyfriend, Aubrey Trail. 24 minutes after Sydney arrived to the apartment, her phone was turned off and Bailey and her boyfriend, Aubrey, murdered her and chopped her body into 13 pieces using a saw. This attack was planned by the couple for a while and there's even surveillance footage of them going into Home Depot and buying the saw and cleaning supplies. They then scattered Sydney's remains along the roads in Clay County, Nebraska and it was found three weeks later. Investigators later found out that the couple talked about gaining power by committing murders and making videos of them torturing people. At the end of it, Bailey was sentenced to life in prison and Aubrey was sentenced to death. I, female 26, was invited to my sister's 18th birthday a few days ago at a restaurant. My husband didn't come because he said he had a meeting dinner with some clients. This made my family feel let down, especially my sister who wanted him there, and also her 18th birthday is a big deal to her, obviously. To my surprise, when I arrived, I noticed that my husband was having his meeting at the same place. His table was right in the corner and he had about four men sitting with him. My parents and the guests saw him as well. I waved for him and he saw me but ignored me. He obviously was as surprised as I was. My parents asked why he didn't even come to the table to acknowledge them after the cake arrived. I got up and walked to his table. I stood there and said, excuse me. My husband was silent when I asked. After I introduced myself to his clients, if he'd take a few minutes to join me and the family in the candle blowing and say happy birthday. But he barely let out a phrase and said, I don't think so. I'm busy right now. I insisted saying it'd just take a couple minutes and that it'd mean so much to my sister. He stared at me and then awkwardly stared back at his clients. They said nothing and he got up after my parents were motioning me to hurry up. He sat with us while my sister blew the candles and cut the cake. My parents insisted that he takes a piece and join us in a selfie, but he got up and walked back to his table looking pissed. We didn't talk until we met later at home. He was upset and started scolding me in front of my parents, saying I embarrassed him and made him look unprofessional and ruined his business meeting. I told him that he overreacted since it only took a few minutes and it was my sister's birthday and my family wanted him to join since he was literally in the same restaurant. He called me ignorant and accused me of tampering with his work, but I responded that ignoring mine and my family's presence was unacceptable. We argued and then he started stonewalling me and refusing to talk to me at all. Also, it literally only took five to seven minutes. He didn't even eat nor drink, just sat down and watched. So, am I in the wrong for asking my husband to join us on my sister's birthday since he was in the same restaurant?
I'm finally ready to leave my husband, but he can't understand why. My story is probably the opposite of anyone here, but for me it made sense even though it doesn't for my husband and the rest of the family. My husband cheated on me five years ago on a work trip. His colleague sent me the sex tape that she made. Apparently, they slept together. She used a tape to get him to start the relationship with her, and when he refused, she exposed him to me. I was in utter shock. This just couldn't happen to us. How could he do this to me when he said that he loved me so much? I couldn't take the images out of my head. I was broken and paralyzed, I think, because while the normal reaction should have been to yell and shout and leave him, I just went into a depression and was too weak to take actions. He asked for marriage counseling and for two years, I lived in this depressed trance and I honestly don't remember thinking of anything about my husband and his affair, seeing the images she sent me whenever I closed my eyes. After a few months and with the therapist's recommendation, he tried to get intimate with me, but it just triggered my PTSD. I was so embarrassed to give him my body when it wasn't enough for him. I felt so disgusted and ugly and him touching me was so shameful. Like, why would he want something that wasn't enough? He tried to make me believe that I was beautiful and more than enough and that it was him, not me, and it was never about me not being enough for him. But for me, it was all just lies and a bunch of gibberish. I knew for a fact I was disgusting and I had proof. My husband's cheating. After two years, things were getting brighter. The nightmares and images started fading and the individual and couples therapy did miracles. I started to love myself again and sometimes it went days without thinking of my husband's affair. We started having sex again after three years and while the image of him with her was always there, I thought that I just had to live with it. Here is where I might be weird. Now, five years later, I'm fully happy, feel that I've gained back the control of my life and I put the whole ordeal behind me. At the same time now, I feel that my marriage is over. My husband is in total disarray. Why now when we're finally happy again? When I'm back to being my old self and finally over what he did? I even forgave him. I did. But I don't understand his confusion. For me now, I'm happy and strong again. I feel I want more. For myself, from life, and from the man that I share my life with. I couldn't leave when I was too weak to think properly and without the bias. I couldn't leave when I didn't have the free will, consumed by grief. Why can't he see it was a healthy way of thinking, not making decisions while hurting? I'm 35 now. I want to start a family. I want to start this family with someone who would never have done this to me. Doesn't this make sense? I left my wife six months ago for another woman. I've been married to her for 15 years and we have three children together. She was the love of my life, but the chemistry I had for her had died. I knew she could see I have changed towards her. And she did everything in her power to make things work again, but I felt trapped. I had also met another woman at this point. She was young and she was bringing back excitement to my life. I realized I had fallen in love with this new woman. So I told my wife I wanted a divorce. She begged and asked me to stay, but I felt staying would be unfair to her since I didn't love her anymore. So so I left and moved in with a new woman. Despite the way we ended things, my wife never held any grudge against me. I could still go back to the house to visit the kids even when she was around. And she even cooked for me to eat before I left. She never spoke hell of me to our children. She never insulted me and she never got angry at me. That is the kind of woman she has always been anyway. Now, my life with a new woman was pretty exciting. I was crazy about her and I knew she loved me too. She was also a good woman and she was on good terms with my ex-wife. We've been together for 6 months now and everything has been okay. So my my kids told me the same man has been visiting their mom in the house for a couple of months now. And my kids seemed to love him and they couldn't stop talking about him. For some reason I don't know, I felt jealous instantly. But I just kept this feeling to myself. I met this man myself when I visited my kids last month. He seemed like a great guy and I could see my ex-wife was happy again. And that was when I realized I never stopped loving her. I was still madly in love with her. And she's all I can think about now. I know my new woman is great but I want my wife back. I'm scared it might be too late but I don't want to give up. Yet. I'm scared she might be falling in love with a new man because she would never introduce just any man to her kids. And at this point, I would do everything and anything in my power to get her back. I know I messed up, but I need help. What can I do to win back the love of my life? This follower needs your advice, babes. Please drop some below. I'm an asshole for refusing to visit my parents if they tried to get my ex and I back together. My ex and I dated for a couple years and my parents loved him. And they constantly invited him to everything and talked about him all the time. Then he found out he had a kid from a one night stand before we started dating. I tried to roll with it for a few more months but it was just too much to deal with and I broke it off. So recently I showed up to Thanksgiving to my parents like usual and guess who's sitting in the living room? Tom and his child. I turn around, walk back out, get in the car and go to my hotel. My mom calls, asking where I went and why I went. I tell her she knows damn well. I asked why my ex was there and then she admitted that like he's like family with her and he didn't want them to be alone for the holidays. When I asked why she didn't tell me ahead of time, she said that it's obvious I still love him and she thought that we could reconcile. This infuriated me. I don't want to be a step parent or at least not right now and I've moved on. I told my mom what she did was wrong and really out of line and I 
told her at any function that he's at, I will not be there. She's upset that I gave her an ultimatum, but she does apologize for springing him on me. So am I the asshole?